girl on fire. This is how I view the volatile relationship between John Winthrop and Anne Hutchinson. I first saw the slight undertones of this comparison last week when viewing the first installment of the PBS documentary, A New Adam, for last week's study. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Sarah Davis Leonard, and I'm an online doctoral student of history at Liberty University. Now back to the heated conflict between Hutchinson and Winthrop. In the depicted sections of her trial in the PBS documentary, Hutchinson was not intimidated and she did not sway from her cause nor desert her followers when she was in difficulty. The skills she clearly exhibited in Tom's childbirth crisis shined through when she was underneath the gaze of John Winthrop and his peers during her two-day trial. It was this divine spear which reminded me of Katniss Everdeen, but more so did John Winthrop, or as he titled himself, Governor. But before I continue with my analogy, which Winthrop was clearly involved with, let me recap and summarize the Hunger Games storyline for those who may not have seen the movie or read the books. Katniss Everdeen lives in a dystopian world controlled by the Capitol, which is run by President Snow. When Katniss survives the games and leads a rebellion to stop them, President Snow becomes obsessed with Katniss and watches her every move. Now switching back to history and real facts. The storyline was probably the worst case for Governor Winthrop, for as he watched through his window observing the comings and goings of his colonists to Anne Hutchinson's house, his fears grew daily as he saw her power and influence spreading like fire. In my master's program, I took women's history primarily to be exposed to a subfield of history not readily covered in Christian education. For one of my weekly book reviews, I had to read The Devil in the Shape of a Woman, Witchcraft in Colonial New England, by Carol F. Carlson. Carlson's modern interpretation of the women suspected and later sentenced to be witches during the Salem Witch Trials of just 12 years after this event were accused due to their economic position. All of the women forever immortalized by the playwright Arthur Miller in The Crucible were women of wealth and status, according to Carlson, not on the fringe of society as depicted by Miller or modern film. However, I believe that the examination of Hutchison's trial can serve as a better foundation for the Puritan view of women who rose above their assumed status in the New World. By reading the actual words of Winthrop, his opinion of a woman's state is one regarding the home, childbirth, and domesticity in which she conducted her life in pursuit of godliness, in prayer and supplication to the will of her husband and church elders. However, this strictly defined framework did not fit with the undefined territory of the New World and a colony facing difficulty and ruin. Winthrop himself wrote of noble women who were essential to the stability of the colony, but when one emerged stating descent, Winthrop quickly assumed the role of his previous persecutors in England, where he had only six years before been the dissenter against the organized church and her leaders. Moreover, by focusing so much attention on Hutchinson and her increasing power, Winthrop sacrificed his own by exposing himself to attacks politically. This comparison is drawn by Anne Fairfax Withington and Jack Schwartz in their 1978 journal article, The Political Trial of Anne Hutchinson. Whereas Anne Hutchinson's trial was political like Sir Thomas More's or Antigone, so too can John Winthrop be compared to Henry VIII or Creon. In all three of these trials, the defendant was tried upon the conviction of conscience, when he or she disobeyed the laws of the state as he or she saw them unjust. I have conducted the trial at Antigone in my classroom before, and my students, with each reenactment, Antigone becomes a righteous martyr for the cause of liberty, while Creon is forged into a tyrannical ruler, seizing God-given rights from his people. Yet the author of post-secular Puritans' recent retrials of Anne Hutchinson Michael W. Kaufman states that we should not view these two individuals with either the lens of feminism, nor can we trust the words of Winthrop, for he places himself in the right as a result of unconscious bias. As this is more recent research, it shows a clear revision of how historians have approached this interaction between two strong individuals. As Edmund S. Morgan, in his 1970s, 1937 article regarding Anne Hutchinson's case for the New England Quarterly, he verbally attacks Massachusetts as a whole for expelling Anne and her followers upon the 300th anniversary of the event. Overall, this trial at first glance depicts the dogmatic approach Puritans took to their lives and their hope of forming in the New World a perfect Christian society. Yet with further study of not only present research, but of past as well, the consequence of this trial broadens to not reveal both the prosecutor and defender as products of their times, sowing the seeds for a later fire, the Salem Witch Trials. <laughs>